there are yellow tags. So both item works and the team behind would be to remove the things immediately from the workplace where there are red tags. But the yellow tag items would always remain there and then later on you have to decide about the yellow tag. Next please. Uh, definitely you have to decide on the standard of the red tagging as uh, Dr. Nigel has briefed that uh, everybody would be on the same understanding that uh, where to put the red tag and how to put the red tag. And better is that you may develop the 5S committee and then start giving the training on this 5S committee. And in this 5S committee, you can include uh, uh, the different departments, people and start training on uh, what is the sorting out technique, how to put this red tag and uh, what is mean by red tag and where to put the red tag and where to put the yellow tag. That is very, very necessary. Dr. Nigel, would you like to add something on it? No, I think uh, I think that's um, the, the the key message is make sure you are ruthless. You need to if you have things that you want to keep for some sentimental reason, like I mentioned, you know, the old forging press that wasn't used anymore, then make sure you actually do something with it. Don't just leave it um, and you know, five years later, it's still there and it's still uh, still cluttering up the workplace. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, definitely, you may discover that there are some defective items, there are some dead stock, there are some sleeping stocks, excessive materials, excessive spares are there, and uh, sometimes in the store you find that they are not movable, but still they are usable. Uh, in that case, you have to put the yellow tag so that next time you may decide after one year and then it would be in better position that you may decide uh, that these are usable or still these are uh, not usable and you can throw them away. And the other thing, of course, that you can do if there are defective components or there is defective machinery or machinery that's missing a spare part. If three or four different departments have that same piece of machinery, you can cannibalize them. You know, you could yeah. uh, take parts from one. Uh, maybe you have four defective uh, uh, pieces of equipment. You can take them and make two good pieces of working equipment and then throw away the parts that uh, are no longer needed. Yeah, definitely. Where the, uh, this is very good example, I think, where the uh, innovation is not uh, so much rapid, like in IT sector, uh, every time the new models are coming, but still there are some of the models, uh, appear, those can be used into the upcoming model. And if those are there and you need the upcoming model, uh, maintenance, you can utilize some of the spares. Those are available into your old equipment and you can utilize them. Uh, uh, and are you making yeah. me nostalgic again, Shokat? I can remember the times where I would give my old mobile phone, my cast offs, I would give it to my kids and they would yeah. be very happy when they were young. Now it's the other way around. You know, they get the most modern mobile phones and the ones that are no longer uh, good enough for them, they give to their dads. Yeah. So I think times yeah, right. change. Right. Yeah. Uh, definitely, we were discussing about this yellow tag and the theme of the yellow tag is that if in doubt, throw it out. I mean, if you are in doubt, you have to throw it out or not. The answer is no, you will not throw it out if you are in doubt, rather than you will put the yellow tag so that you may decide it later on. Next. And in the yellow tag, as I briefed you that in yellow tag, you have to put the next date. For example, if this date, uh, the last date, you have done the 5S audit and in the 5S audit, you have 
put the yellow tag and you have put the date when you have done the audit and that is 23rd august 2019 and then you have to put the next date expected date based on your judgment that uh, we will do the next audit into maybe into the end of the 2020 and then you can put the next date uh, 23rd 11 2020 so that on that date or before that date you may check it again and you can decide uh, again that either these items are still usable or not and sometimes again you are in doubt so you can keep on extended this kind of thing if you are still in doubt but if you are now sure then you have to convert this yellow tag into the red tag and then you have to throw it out yellow tag techniques is used when you are not sure definitely you are uh, not clear that this is usable or not and on a fixed day label and mark the date you have to fix the date next date and you have to mark it with the label if label items are used thereafter remove the label maybe during the year as uh, Nigel has said that you uh, can cannibalize, cannibalize the different items together and make one piece that is intact piece. And if you have done that thing, it means now these are the usable items and you have to remove the yellow tag from them uh, maybe uh, during, during the year. Uh, if possible, inspect after six months, maybe you may get uh, a new idea that uh, you can utilize these equipment into some other place if still not sure then repeat the inspection after one year but definitely you have to keep on checking these yellow atoms at least once in a year so that you may decide because ultimate goal is to remove the uh, non-usable item so that uh, you may uh, clear your workplace that can be utilized with the good items and workplace is always a cost and that cost you have to save it sorting out day you can definitely as i briefed you that you can prepare a sorting out committee or a five s committee or you can decide a sorting out day with everyone from top to the bottom sorting out people people can participate from the CO and if you will see the draw the, uh, the table draws of the CO you will find many things those need to be sorted out from the table draws or even if you see your own table you will find some uh, some extra things those are there and those are not usable you can remove them but uh, the sorting out day normally uh, should be utilized in a proper way from top to bottom and uh, everybody should first basically implement this sorting out day at his own workplace. Uh, if I could just add to that, uh, Shokat, for me, this is the day when people in the organization start to sit up and say, wow, the boss is serious about quality. You know, everybody takes part together. Uh, it's, you know, it creates a great sense of teamwork if it's done properly. It instills a great sense of pride, the before and after. Uh, it can be fun. You know, you roll up your sleeves and you will get dirty and you will find things that you've never seen before. And you will share good experiences with your colleagues. It's a really, really is a very, very good team building exercise. Uh, so sorting out where do you start? As I briefed you, start with your uh, own wallet. Start with your own computer bag. Start with your own diary. Maybe in the diary, you always put many receipts and many things into your diary start with your own uh, table draws start with your own uh, file cabinets 
and as dr nigel has shown you the computer nowadays everything we are going to store in the computer and into many many folders there are many things those are not usable so organize your own computer sort out your own computer and even in the computer you can put the folders like uh, red tag folder and the yellow tag folder it means the red tag folder need to be deleted immediately and the yellow tag folder i mean the yellow folder need to be decided later on that these are the files i am not going to delete at this stage at this time so you can start it from your own things and then keep on enhancing it because it is a fun and uh, you can enjoy the fun when you will start implement at your own workplace after you sort out after you are sorting out day uh, your workplace should look very different i mean once you sort apply the sorting out technique on your workplace it should look uh, very different otherwise it means still you have not applied the sorting out in a good manner uh yes that's nice next when you complete the active sorting out there should be no clutter anywhere in your organization uh, there should be no so much uh clutter into your office as drawers into your office tables in the coming slides you will see some of the pictures where sorting out has been applied and there is a significant difference into the clutter into the work and process into the inventory system so everything should be stored according to frequency of use sometimes yes uh the unwanted things occupying the workplace you can see here on the on the extreme right side you can see how many things and how many how much clutter is there and these things are not required but uh, i'm but, sure i'm sure there will yeah. be people smiling uh, shortcut when they look at this and they think wow that's just like my office uh, <laughs> and and uh, I, I, you know, I did the same thing myself when I when I first got involved with 5S, and uh, then you become disciplined to not leave things like that. Yeah, it is good experience if you take the picture before applying the sorting out, take the picture of your organization and uh, the workplaces uh, before applying the sorting out, and uh, then once you apply the sort out, then you take the picture. and you compare it you will enjoy that how the mess was there into the organization and now how it is looking on so that you know, some, sometimes yeah. even, even even now you know first time i was involved in 5s was probably 30 years ago uh, but even now sometimes i'll be in a meeting in a large meeting room and when the meeting is finished for me it's instinct it's part of my routine I will put my chair back under the table. I will make sure it's square with the table. If I've had a coffee cup, I will take it away. I will throw away the plastic or paper coffee cups. I will, you know, put the water away and leave my little place of where I've been sitting at the table clean and tidy. And sometimes people will say to you, "Why do you do that? You know, we've got cleaners to do that." Well, it's a sense of pride. and it becomes part of the routine and that that is what we will expect when once we get the 5s mentality mentality into our bloodstream that it becomes something that's so so nice to do and it makes us feel good yeah you are right over the period of time it becomes culture it becomes culture of the organization and it becomes your own habit and you always adopt this habit whenever and wherever you are now here you can see that red tag area in the organization i mean uh, he has not applied the red uh, red tag but uh, some of the items are very 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 heavy you cannot remove them so 
he has put a boundary and only written uh, on the item that this is a red tag area and everything that has been placed here it uh, should be considered as a red tag uh, this is another technique if you are not uh, uh, putting the red tag uh, uh, in a tag way the other thing of course is that when you move around the organization it's not uncommon for somebody to say oh you've put a red tag on that don't you want it i can use that and they will take it and it will be something that will be useful for them but the, that was not useful for you and so once again it helps to build that teamwork yeah you are right uh definitely now you understand that uh, uh how the sorting out is uh, is uh, a excellent technique but it is so much more scientific i mean when you will start start uh, uh, implementing the sorting out technique you will feel that it is not simply throwing away the unwanted things but it is a scientific uh, uh, i mean it it is a science because uh, in some cases you cannot decide all of sudden that uh, these are basically not usable things you have to consider those things in many ways and with many other experts as well yeah and i think that's um, that's a good place for us to move into uh, the second s uh, because it's this is not a one off Thing. It's not something you do and then forget about it. It has to become uh, part of the routine. It has to become part of the culture. So once we've done that uh, sorting out, then the second S is putting things in order, setting in order or straightening things. And the slogan that we use for the second S is a place for everything and everything in its place. In other words, we know where things should be, we know where to find them, and when we go to look for them, they are there. We don't waste time searching. Because on average, we spend a lot of time in searching. Whether it's for tools or whether it's for a particular file in our computer system, or whether it's for something in stock, or whether it's for a telephone number or whatever. And that search time is unproductive. One of the core elements of lean is eliminate anything that doesn't add value. And time wasted looking for things doesn't add value. So we can have, there are various ways we can do this. Uh, we can have a location index and a grid system where you know, maybe we name everything A, B, C, uh, a grid system in a large factory building, office buildings, every room can be labeled, it can be given a name like you would do in a large warehouse. Method of finding any location or office without difficulty. Direction signs from the entrance itself. It's friendly towards new employees and visitors. They should be able to locate any place without having to ask everybody. It's like having a map on uh, 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 with coordinates, or having your little GPS. I just remember a very personal experience. Uh, my wife and I now live in a house because our children have grown up and moved away, and we are thinking of moving to a small house. Uh, but while we do that, there are a lot of what we call treasures, things from our kids' childhood, you know, old toys that we want to keep for sentimental value, but we don't need them in our house. About a year ago, I put all of those up in the loft in the roof. And this was, it wasn't something I consciously thought, I'll do a 5S, but I used this technique. I put off little areas so that we know that, you know, our son who's 28 years old 
the little teddy bear that he had when he was six months old. I know that that is in location A1 in the loft in such and such a box. And it makes it easier to go back and find things uh, when we want to do that. So this is not just something that we can use in our professional lives, we can use it in our personal lives as well. Obviously without going overboard, otherwise you know, everybody just thinks that we're neurotic and uh, you know, we want to discipline things so much at home uh, as we do at the office, but using common sense. So here for example, a uh, sample area for the arrangement of yarn in a textile uh, company. Uh, cord identification for yarn manufacturing. We uh, have the uh, advantages and the benefits. It avoids mixing products. We may have an area for non-conforming product or product that's awaiting tests and inspection. And we'll see later when we look at ISO 9001 requirements, this will help us tremendously to meet the identification and traceability requirements of ISO 9001, just by having this place, having everything in its place and a place for everything. Um, the idea of a reserved seat, so that we know where that piece of equipment is and it should go back to its reserved seat. So rather than just throwing tools in a box, then we can have a very clear place as to where the tools go. Uh, or maybe on a board or uh, uh, some kind of a, a rack where we can see when they're missing. And we can see very, very clearly where they belong uh, and when they're not where they should be. Files, you know, before, Files, they're not particularly disorganized, but not very necessarily easy to find things. Afterwards, we have good identification, easy retrieval, uh, quick retrieval, because maybe they're in alphabetical order or chronological order, uh, uh, and they're labeled, and we can find them in very, very quick period of time. And if, and if uh, some of the file would be missing, if you see at the extreme right side, uh, there, is a, there is a order and the order of some of the file would be missing, then uh, the line would be cut off because this, this, these libel technically are placed in a line way. For example, if the third file is missing, then you will see this is a discontinuity of the line and you will immediately come to know oh, the third file is in, into some other meeting room, you will go and you will bring it here and you will place it here. And, and we start to see how all of these things are interrelated. One of the topics we'll be talking about in, in the future um, uh, presentations will be about what we call, the Japanese call pokayoke, which is error proofing. So that you can see very, very visually that something is missing, mm. that something is wrong. You know, I, I, tend to, I tend to joke about it and I call it idiot proofing, making things idiot proof so that any idiot can see that something is, is there and, uh, or it's not there and something is missing. And ISO 9001 actually talks about that. It talks about using techniques to avoid human error. And if we make things so that it's impossible to make a mistake, then we make things a lot easier for ourselves within the quality management system. We'll talk more about that uh, over the course of the next few weeks and months. Um, individual drawers, you know, the home or the reserve seat strategy. So we've got little markers. We know where things are supposed to go. Um, a very, very nice tidy drawer. We may have a, a sort of polystyrene, uh, um, um, in a cabinet so that we see where things fit, we can see where they need to go and we can see where they're missing. Uh, for glassware, maybe in a laboratory, very, very easy not only to protect the equipment but for us to see where the equipment should be and for us to be able to locate it very, very easily. These are not expensive 
uh, things. These are things that you can do, you know, just cut a bit of polystyrene up or cut a bit of uh, foam up uh, and it will be well, well worth the money that's spent, the money and the time. 5S in the office files, listings. You know, I have, I have a big, big old collection of CDs and records. I still have my CD player, I still enjoy listening to them. And I have them all catalogued so that I know where they are. I don't need to go searching for my old Beatles uh, uh, disc or my old Rolling Stones disc or whatever. I'm sure some of the younger people watching will say, who are the Beatles, who are the Rolling Stones? But uh, that's just me showing my age. But that helps us to cut down the time we spend looking for things. We can use um, liberty coding in the laboratory. Label things as green that we use all the time, yellow less frequent, and maybe we use a red coding for confidential items. Or maybe they're going to be in a safe. You know, if they are recipes for the particular kind of paint that we make, or if it's the entire production method for a particular painted component. We don't want people being able to go in and, and steal those easily. We need to set limits and systemize, make things systematic. I think that was one of the photographs we showed earlier and now look at it afterwards. You know, so much nicer, so much tidier, so much more quality focus. If I went into a company like this one um, after the uh, organization, I'd say, wow, now this, this company gives me a good impression. I can see they are concerned about quality. We maybe use uh, a 5S corner at the organizational entrance so that we can uh, have before and after photographs, you know, displays, the zone layout. Look at the 5S policy and objectives. We'll talk later on about uh, the uh, uh, systematizing and, and the sustaining. We may uh, instigate a, a program of 5S scoring by having auditors or maybe the boss go around and rating different areas. Zone-wise radar charts and 5S procedures. So all of those things are uh, instilled in us in everybody, that sense of pride. Um, here's the wall showing you know, before and after photographs. And people start to think about quality and start to take quality very, very seriously and have the building blocks in place so that when we talk about implementing a quality management system, the fundamental culture is there to help to do that. So with that, I think I'll finish my part and pass over back to uh, Shokat to, uh, to wind this up. Thank you, Dr. Nigel. Uh, basically, now you have understood about these uh, two S. Uh, one is the far, one S uh, that was the sorting out and uh, then after the sorting out, once the things are are unnecessary things are not available, only the important and necessary things are available, then how to keep them in order. So these are two S and in the next lecture, we will discuss about remaining three S. But the crux of the matter is that five S add value into the productivity, and into the organization culture. As we have discussed that uh, 5S is important not only for the safety of the organization, but also for the quality of the organization. Both can be achieved with this 5S technique. And the ultimate goal is to create the culture of quality and to create the culture of safety into your organization. And over the period of time, when it becomes habit, then you have seen that not only it become habit and it become culture of your organization to keep the things in a proper way, but it becomes the habit as a person 
your own habit and later on you get the real benefits but that is required as uh, dr nigel said that we are not uh, we have not included this 5s all of sudden this is a basically foundation for implementing any quality program either it is a iso 9000 either you want to start iso 22000 iso 14000 or even you start uh, want to start the lean system you want to start the kaizen system this is a foundation without the 5s you cannot move further thank you very much dr nigel thank you thanks shokat yeah thank you very much and this is uh, the twitter account of our project the facebook account of our project is there please keep on visiting and uh, soon you would, would get these lecture available for you and then we will discuss further and we will go into other trees thank you very much thank you dr nigel nigel for your time and for contributing and, uh, and uh, i mean contributing your true experience into the five years thanks and i hope i hope to see you all again soon in person once all this covid is over yeah definitely sarah leon is waiting for you <laughs> thanks Thank you.